It's a big crowd. Um, I didn't expect so many people coming today. It's good to see everyone. Some familiar faces, some not familiar faces. Um, I'm excited to see the enthusiasm. Um, so it's interesting, this event is um, exploring how people embrace Islam. And I just want to say from the outset, I think that a lot of people in this audience, um, or uh, many people here, could, could be sitting in our seats. I don't think that there's anything particularly unique, actually, about our experiences. I don't even really know most of the people on this stage. But um, I think everyone has a unique story in how they embrace um, God and, and how they came closer. So I just want to say that from the outset that I don't think there's anything particularly unique about my story and this is here. Um, besides the fact that maybe that we were at, um, raised in, in a Muslim context or Muslim families. But there are a lot of Muslims that grew up in a Muslim family that didn't, that didn't practice their faith, that didn't, didn't really have a relationship with God, and how they came to um, love God and come closer is a fascinating story in itself. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so for me, um, I grew up in an environment where um, I wasn't exposed to many positive aspects of religion or religious people. There are a few people in my family who are religious, and they're amazing people. Um, but the overwhelming negative um, understanding that I had on a very surface level of religion and religious people really pushed my interest away from religion um, for the majority of my life, actually. Um, I, I was exposed to a lot of hatred that comes from religion, and division, and judgmentalness, and it was really, it really turned me off. So from a very early age, I, I had no interest in religion, um, or really associating with any religious people whatsoever. Um, and then I went to college, and I started meeting people who were religious, of various religions, um, and uh, who, who really uh, also believed in the values that, that my family raised me on, of loving people and caring for, for everyone, and you know, sort of your basic um, like value structure that I think is innate in each one of our hearts. Um, and so I was confused. I was like, okay, so there's religious people, and they're smart, and they're funny, and they're artistic, and they're interesting, and they love people. And so this, this, is, this, is, um, this is what we call cognitive dissonance, right? So I was confused. But this is what college is for, cognitive dissonance, right? Every day you get challenged about the things that you believe in, you're raised on. So um, I started studying religion from a intellectual standpoint, various religions. But I wanted something more. I wanted something more experiential um, opportunity to, to see what was out there. And it wasn't just uh, uh, to understand religion, but just to understand the world. So I saved up some money. Um, and I, I bought a plane ticket um, to Pakistan, like anyone would do, right? Naturally. Um, <laughs> and I traveled um, for six months. And for those out there who are interested in traveling, I, I promise you, you can do it if you, if you work hard and, and you can't save money. It's not that expensive to do. And $6,000, I traveled for six months through Asia. Um, and it, it changed my life. Um, the people I met, amazing people of all different religious backgrounds. Um, I spent a lot of time in India, and as a lot of you know here, India is probably the most diverse place on the planet by any, any measure you could, you could have. Um, so I met people of all different religious backgrounds and cultural backgrounds and languages and their experiences. And, and um, I saw something that a lot of these people had that I didn't have, that had, that had deep faith in their tradition and, and their love for God and people because of their love for God, and I didn't understand that, but there was something there that I wanted to understand. So um, I started practicing Buddhism. Um, I did some traveling around in, in uh, places with a lot of Buddhists, so it's bad in Nepal and other parts of India. And I started practicing Buddhism, and I came back to the United States. And um, it was it was um, a positive step for me, but there was something missing for me. Um, it was very difficult for me to concentrate. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't a path that fit my constitution. 
And so um, I went back to India uh, a few times and I was studying languages there and studying culture and doing some different projects. Um, but I met some people uh, in India who are actually American, um, studying as well in India, that showed me what it was to be a Muslim and what, what, what faith was and to live it out. And really, they, they lived their faith in a way that was very um, subtle um, and humble, and I was really attracted to that. And I wanted to know more. And so I started studying um, um, to sell with Su Sufism, which is sort of the, the mystical um, aspect of Islam. Every tradition has a mystical component. Um, in Judaism, it's Kabbalah. There's a number of you know, different traditions for each religion. But for Islam, it's, it's the Sawaf. Um, so I started study, studying that, and it really struck uh, a chord with me. It, there's a, it, it, I was intellectually stimulated, but it also touched my heart at the same time. And I saw people practicing in a way that was, it really was really moving to me. Um, but I still wasn't sure, because there are aspects about Islam that I still struggle with. Um, and most of them has to do with the outer components of Islam. It has to do with the community, it has to do with other aspects that, um, that I continue to struggle with. And so I wasn't sure if Islam was for me. Um, I was into prayer, the idea of bowing down and putting your head on the ground five times a day, or actually more than five times a day, but praying intention at least five times a day was really attractive to me. There's a structure to it sort of gives me uh, a reminder throughout the day what's really important. But there are other aspects that I wasn't comfortable with. So I wasn't quite sure what, what angle I needed. And I, um, I decided to go, I, I was working on a film, and there was an opportunity I had to go to um, Jerusalem. And I, I decided that I wanted to sort of sort things out. And so I, I asked God, and I said, show me what you want for me. Um, and I went to all the different religious sites. I went to Haifa, I went to, I went, uh, went to uh, Palestine, I went all over. I visited various areas. And um, I was praying in um, the Dome of the Rock, and my answer was, was there. It was very clear to me. Um, it was, a, it was a moment that I, I can't describe. And it was just a feeling that I had in my heart. It was unmistakable what it was. So I had my answer come to that. So I, I said, okay, I'm gonna give this a go. I know it's not gonna be easy, but I'm gonna try. So I'm still trying, and I'm here today. Um, that's, that's, the, that's the short story. I, I really wanna hear from other people, so I'm not gonna stop, and, and um, we, can, we can discuss this.